First of all, I suggest that you watch this video in HD and in full screen by adjusting the settings on your player so you can appreciate the fine details of the images. Once again, our normal chest X-ray is in front of us and compare it with the X-ray that is visible on your left hand side. Now, if you have seen a few normal chest X-rays, you'll realize very quickly that there is definitely something wrong with the patient on your left hand side. The mediastinum is white in this area uh, on this patient. There is um, a mass effect in aortopulmonary window so the aortopulmonary window on this patient is this which is normal but there is a mass effect here and there is a mass effect there is a widening here uh, in this uh, part of mediastinum on the X-ray on your left hand side. So first thing that comes to mind after seeing the mediastinal widening in this area would be enlarged lymph nodes. You can see abnormal opacities in both lungs here as well and there is a, an abnormal lucency here and in this area and most probably in this area as well. You would agree that uh, there is a reticular nodule pattern and there are uh, fibrotic changes in mid zones on both sides and as the lung shrinks in volume as a result of fibrosis it can produce what is known as tra traction bronchiectasis so shrinking interstitial pulls bronchi to dilate them in a non-uniform so this probably is a dilated uh, bronchial branch uh, you can see thick walls on both sides and this is the same thing a dilated uh, bronchial branch an axial CT scan image from the same patient uh, a bit below uh, from carina and you can see calcified lymph nodes you can see calcification here and you can see calcification here these are enlarged calcified lymph nodes an HRCT image from the same patient a cut taken just uh, below the level of carina so this is carina here uh, right main bronchus left main bronchus and you can see traction bronchiectasis here here and here as well so the dilatation of the uh, the bronchial branches uh, is visible clearly so this is um, a bit small from here and a bit more dilated from here you can see the the thickened walls of the bronchial branches normal bronchial tree should taper towards the periphery okay which is not the case in this uh, case on this image you can also see what are known as perilymphatic nodules uh, visible on, on both lungs. These are nodules within interstitium which can be subplural. They can also be present along the fissure or along the interlobular septae and or adjacent to bronchovascular bundles. But before I continue on this I want to show you another image from a different patient. Okay, another image with uh, perilymphatic nodules uh, and as I said these are the nodules within interstitium. I guess it would be very difficult for a newbie to agree with me but I just wanted to make a point uh, and the most convincing thing for me would be to show you this fissure which is sort of beaded in shape unlike this uh, smooth and regular line. So these beaded shaped structures are the perilymphatic nodules which uh, as I said can be present within the uh, which can be present along the fissure and uh, within the interlobular septae as well as uh, adjacent to bronchovascular bundles. So all the features mentioned so far um, that is lung fibrosis, traction bronchiectasis and the presence of perilymphatic nodules uh, are suggestive of interstitial lung disease. In this case, both the patients have been diagnosed with sarcoidosis. Please note that the patient, uh, the first patient, also has enlarged lymph nodes, which, along with the presence of all the features mentioned before, should make you think of sarcoidosis. Also, note that the most common cause of perilymphatic nodules is sarcoidosis, although they can be present in other interstitial conditions.